Welcome back. Today we're going to tie elk hair caddis. Get us off of these nymphs and get some dry flies tied up. We're going to be using a size 16 standard dry fly hook. We're going to use, I'm using UV tan dubbing. This is a ice dub. Nice stuff, adds a little sparkle. Uh, tan hackle, some small gold wire. Trying to use up this lager tan, lager ton, however you pronounce that. And we're using a 6 aught tan thread. So let's get started. And anything that I've missed in the description here will be in my description on the video. So we'll lay ourselves a nice clean thread base. We're starting about two two eyelets back from the hook eye. Right back to the right back to the barb. Generally I leave the barb. If you want to smash them that's up to you. Sometimes with these small ones it's good to smash them. They come out of a hook fish's mouth a lot easier. So we're going to start, we're going to tie in a piece of fine wire and nice tight wraps, get her wrapped in nice and snug and we'll wrap back to the bend, back to our tie-in point. Voila! Take a piece of our hackle here, we'll get her doctored up. I'll show you this little way I cut them. You can see I make a little crew cut. And that just leaves some barbels on there, lets it lets that thread lock in. I want to leave oh just a smidge not tied in. And the reason for this is when you make that first wrap, if you tie right into where the barbels start you're going to get some hackle fibers and they're going to face backwards and no big deal you can trim them off but if you leave just a little bit you can see how there's just a little bit of that crew cuts hanging out when you make that first wrap the the main stem of the feather will wrap and when it comes over the top to make your first actual wrap you can see how those fibers will stand straight up and down right off the bat. So if you don't tie right right in, you just leave a little bit of that little bit of that uh, stem of the feather, it actually makes a cleaner hackle. And we're gonna get some dub on the thread and you can wax your thread you don't have to wax your thread. I've never really gotten in the habit of doing it. I've lost my... Generally I just use some Birch Bees. I just... Birch Bees wax from the convenience store down the road. And it works perfect. But I seem to have misplaced it. And I've neglected to replace it. So I'm not using it. <laughs> and it'll keep these flyers from getting all over the place too if you do use it. Need just a little bit more. And we want to leave a good space behind that hook eye because you're going to be tying in a wad of elk hair, stacked elk hair, so we don't want to get it too close. And there's no need to make this super pretty. It's a caddis. Bugs aren't perfect. Now a lot of people They'll tie in the hackle and then they'll counter wrap the wire. I have not found much of a difference in either way. Durability wise, it, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. I'll catch a dozen flies off of it one way and I'll catch it, or a dozen fish off of it tied one way and tie on another one that's tied opposite with the wire over top and I'll still catch a dozen fish. 
Um, it, I, I don't, it, this is personal, personal preference here. I like to tie in the wire first. It's quicker, it's easier. And when I'm trying to tie up a few dozen flies for somebody, I'm all about getting her done. So we'll wrap that forward. And it's hard to see with this dubbing. If you're using a natural hair's ear, it'll really stand out. A couple wraps in front to lock it in, and we'll snip that bad boy right down close. Don't get too close that you cut your tying thread. I've done that many times in the past. And you just got to tie in and hope everything doesn't come unraveled before you get tied back in. So we're going to take our aqua pliers and you can see that first wrap takes up that little bit of bare shaft so that your first wrap with the barbel, see how nice and straight it stands? That's what we're looking for. I try and tie these in tight fairly close together. I want it heavy. Um, I figure if somebody wants, you know, if they're fishing in more still water, they can get their nippers out and take some hackle off if they need to. But if they're out there and they want to try and fish some riffles with it, they cannot add a hackle to it on the water. So I'd rather tie in heavy, heavy-ish. And that leaves the fisherman the option to thin it out if needed. And we'll get rid of that little stray there. So now we have a nice even hackle. And what I'm going to do here, and this is pretty standard, take your scissors and give it a little crew cut right down the middle. That'll give the elk hair a place to rest so it's not sticking up in the air. You don't want an upright wing, you want a down wing for a caddis. And we're going to get a little pinch of elk hair here. Pinch out some of these random fibers. Stick it in our hair stacker. You want a nice even stack of hair. So we'll pull that bad boy out of there. Then you can see it's all wild at the other end. I like to trim some of that out just to make it a little bit more uniform when I'm working with it. There we go. It doesn't have to be even. You're going to be trimming it off again. And this is an experiment. You're tying a small fly. You want a decent feather or a decent wing looking decent looking wing but you don't want so much that it's splays out we're not we're not doing uh, spun hair here so you see this feller here's a little bit long so we're gonna just remove him from the mix if I can get a hold of him there we go and we went just past the hook bend about like yay so perfect and we're gonna do a loose wrap and we're gonna do a loose wrap and then we're going to pull up and let it tighten. And then we're going to do a wrap and tighten. And we're going to do a wrap and tighten. And we're going to do a wrap and let it dangle. And we're going to make sure we're lined up. And we look pretty good there. So we're going to pull all these butt ends up. And we're going to build a nice big thread dam in front here. And you want to push that thread back into the into your elk hair you want that butt ends to stand up like so looks like we've got some flyers going on here what are you doing just pull them back up over and a few won't hurt so we get our butt ends we get in there pretty close we're going to trim our head off. We'll come back and nip some of these strays that didn't quite get caught the first time. There. 
And you can see these couple that are flopping down. We can always go back and trim them out. And we're going to get our whip finisher on. And this is, you can whip finish with a little skill on that. Or you can use your half hitch tool. Two wraps around your half inch tool. Slide it on there and then just slide it down and that actually gets you right up underneath. Like, voila. I seem to have caught a few hackle barbels in there. Oh, go around and clean her up. Stray fibers that are in a spot I don't want them. There's your bottom view, top view. And we are going to do a little bit of head cement. We're going to try and get a drop down on the between the butt ends on that thread wraps there. We're going to flip it over and we're going to get a couple little bit on the underside on those bare threads. And you might say to yourself, Steve, you got head cement in your eyelet, in your hook eye. Well, I keep a little piece of hackle here, run it through the hook eye, shove it down in, whoop, clean as a whistle. And it's ready to fish. And that, my friends, is your elk hair caddis, size 16, ready to go. Hope you learned a little something, and as always, you can make any decision you want on these. Any color, greens, grays, brown, tan, caddis come in assorted sizes and flavors. 16s and 14s and 16s work best for me in this area. It's about our average caddis hatch, so we'll put a I put a spare hackle plier on there. That way I can lay it down without the glue sticking anything. Well, good luck and until I see you next time.